I am thankful for, uh, for all he's done for us, and thank you for how he continues uh, to work in us. And uh, if you would, uh, take your Bible and turn to the Gospels. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 4, uh, Matthew chapter 4 to start with. We're going to be jumping around the, the Gospels and a few other places, but uh, uh, and if I kind of rear back, don't judge me. Uh, I, my vision's a little my, a little iffy. I may need to use my my uh, larger print uh, screen to read the verses. Matthew chapter four, verse nineteen. We'll read it and we'll pray. And it says, uh, "And he saith that he is Jesus, and he saith unto them, Follow me." And I will make you fishers of men. Verse 20 says, And they straightway left their nets and followed him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. God, thank you for uh, your spirit and how you work. Lord, I ask that you would empty me of myself, fill me with your Holy Spirit, cleanse me of any sin. Lord, uh, I don't want to grieve or limit the spirit in any way. God, I pray that you would help me uh, to preach the word in, in, in the power of the spirit. I pray that uh, the that our hearts and our, our eyes would be opened and, and sensitive. Lord, help us to hear uh, what you would have for us today. Uh, Lord, I pray that we would be challenged and encouraged. And, and, and Lord, I just ask that you would work in a great many way. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. This passage that we just read, uh, the, word, the word follow me stuck, stick out to me. Uh, it's the idea Jesus was calling disciples. He was calling people to follow after him. He uses that phrase, that exact phrase, follow me, uh, 13 times in the Gospels. Um, in fact, if you, if you add in how many times, there's more if you add in where he says, come after me. Uh, but, but 13 times he told the disciples to, to follow after him. And, and as, we, as we look at the word of God and as we study the word of God, we, we see that those men that followed him became disciples. Uh, the word disciple means uh, a, a student of, a one who, who, uh, who applies the practices of the doctrines, uh, the things that are taught by a certain person. Anybody can have a, a disciple. John the Baptist had the disciples. He had disciples. He sent two disciples uh, to, 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 go find, to go find Jesus. They became disciples of Jesus. Two other disciples he sent when, Jesus, when he was in prison. And he sent them to find out if Jesus was the one. He, he, uh, there was a moment of, uh, there was a, a crucifix of, 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 of uh, crucible, not crucifix, a crucible of, of trouble in, in his life where, where he was about to get his head chopped off. And, and, and he sent somebody and Jesus responded to those disciples and told them to take the news back. Uh, so, so anybody can have a disciple, but, uh, but here he's, he, he was making disciples. And, and, and he told the, those disciples, those, those 12, those, the, the, the apostles, that they were to go forth and teach uh, and, and baptize and, and teach. Uh, teach uh, and what he was telling them to do, teach them what Jesus had taught, the, uh, taught them. And what he was teaching, uh, wanting them to do is to go out and make more disciples. And not disciples of themselves, but disciples of Jesus Christ. Paul said this, follow after me, but as I follow Christ. Uh, it's important uh, that, uh, every, every, that we understand that God has called every child of God to be a disciple. Uh, now, there's a difference, though. Sometimes there are some people that believe that every Christian is a disciple. Now, I want you to understand, God wants every Christian to be a disciple. But there's a, a difference between being called to be a disciple and, and being a disciple. So the, 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 I just want to go, and I know this is our, our Sunday afternoon crowd, which is, I'm not saying that anybody here isn't a disciple, but we're going to go over seven distinctions, seven, seven things that I, that, I, that I see in Scripture, uh, and not just my thoughts, but, uh, but seven things I see in Scripture that, that kind of separate out the two, uh, that, so that you can be a child of God without being a disciple of Christ. You can be saved, but not living the life. And, and I pray that every, uh, that every one of us is. And, and I, I, again, I'm not, I'm, I, I don't sneak through your social media. I don't hardly even look at it anymore. Praise the Lord. That's a waste of my time. Uh, uh, I don't sneak around your houses. I don't get your call logs. I don't see what you're watching on TV. I don't know what you're doing uh, uh, as far as that's concerned. Uh, but but uh, what I do know is what the Word of God tells us a disciple is and, and what, what salvation is. The uh, first one is, the first is this, 
Matthew chapter 11, 28, if you uh, wouldn't mind turning to Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, is a verse that many of you know. Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly and hard, and ye shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Number one is salvation is come unto me. Jesus Christ is inviting us to him. He's not inviting us to church. He's not inviting us to a movement. He's not inviting us to a, uh, to, 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 to a doctrine. The Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Bible says for, uh, that uh, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It is the, uh, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. It, it's the, and what is the gospel? It's, the, it's the, according to 1 Corinthians 15. It is that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for our sins according to the scriptures and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. It's all about Jesus. Well, Jesus, most of, if not all of us here, are saved. There was a point in time when Christ called you unto Him. Jesus said in John chapter six forty four, "Unless the Father draws one, someone, a man, He cannot come unto the Father." But the only way that we can come unto the Father is through Jesus Christ. Now, so when we think of this. Think of the, the tired, the overburdened, those that are, are striving for salvation on their own. There are a whole lot of them. There are a lot of people that think that if you're good enough, you can get to heaven. Now, we know that that is not the truth. Uh, we know that, that our salvation is not by our good works. We know that our salvation is not by baptism. We know that our salvation is not by church membership or the way that you dress or the fact that we have baptism on the name out there. That is not our salvation. Our salvation comes through faith in what Jesus Christ did uh, for us. Uh, the, 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 the Philippian jailer asked, the, asked uh, Peter, uh, he says, what must I do to be saved? He said, believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's an invitation. Jesus is inviting us unto him to believe in him for salvation. He didn't invite us to, for healing. He didn't invite, invite us in for, for, uh, for, for physical. Listen, there are a lot of reasons people come to, to, come to church. A lot of people, reasons why people come to religion. Sometimes they want peace. Sometimes they want God to do this for them or that for them. Listen, what Jesus offers is salvation. And I praise the Lord that salvation is that come unto me. Why? Because he loves us. We just sang it. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. Am I on pitch? Oh, wow, I got it. It's, it, it he, 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 uh, he, he loved us so much that, that God sent the, the son, and Jesus Christ loved us so much that he died for us. Well, says, greater love hath no man in this than a man laid down his life for his friend. We weren't God's friends. We were not the, sin, the friends of Jesus when he died for us. We were his enemies, yet he still died for us. And notice that verse is, greater love hath no man than this. While Jesus Christ was also man, he was also God. He loved us so much that he died for us on the cross. I praise the Lord for that. Uh, so salvation is an invitation to come unto me. But Matthew 16, 24, if you don't mind turning there, Matthew chapter 16, just turn over a few verses. It says this, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me. See, there's a difference between coming unto me and coming after me. See, when we come unto Christ, we're coming for salvation. We're seeking help. Uh, uh, when, when, I, when God convicted that, that, that third verse of that song that we sang, Beautiful picture of, of, of conviction of my sin. Uh, I don't remember which song it was that we sang that, that it was, but uh, when, when God convicted me of my sin, I didn't say, you know what? I'm just going to start living right. I'm going to change my life. I'm going to turn over a new leaf. I'm going to do the things that Jesus said, and that's going to get me to heaven. There are a lot of nice people out there. There are a lot of nice people in this world. The good people, they give you the shirt off their back, they, they give to charity, they, they, they just want to be there to help. But listen, that doesn't save us, and we, we know that. You can, you can walk in the steps of Christ, but if you've never been to come to Christ for salvation, guess what? You're not saved. 
You can come to church, you can dress right, you can act right, you can give money to the church, you can, you can get baptized, you can do all kinds of things and pretend that you're saved. And guess what? You're not saved. The Bible actually says this, that, that there'll be some in that day that they're going to say, but we did all of these things in your name. And guess what God's going to say? Depart from me, for I never knew you. Why? Because while they came after him, they never came unto him. There is a difference between uh, in, in, in salvation and discipleship. It's not come un, it's come unto me for salvation and come after me for discipleship. And the truth is, if we're going to be disciples, we need to come after him. What's that mean? Follow him. Follow him. It's, it, 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 it sounds simple, and the truth is, it it it's simple to understand, not always simple to do, because we, we battle our flesh. Right? Hey, now, remember, we mentioned this last week. Simple instructions require simple obedience. This, the, the difficult part isn't in the act. The difficult part is in battling the, felt, the flesh that doesn't want us to do those things. It's easy to hand money over. It's easy to give money to somebody that needs it. But I don't want to. <laughs> See what I mean? Sorry, Frank. It's wrapped up in a dollar. You don't know how much it is. I could be a millionaire. <laughs> okay, you know better than that. You know what, you know what, do you understand what I'm saying? It's, it's easy to do the act. Except for my flesh says, I don't like that. So what do we have to do? Well, Galatians chapter 5 says, if you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, how do we walk in the Spirit? By allowing the Spirit to control us. Which, which, what does the Spirit always do? Point to Christ. Those fruits of the Spirit. Now, those are the, those are the things that we're supposed to do, or are supposed to be fruit coming, coming through us, but what, what, where else, do, who do we see those things in? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, justice. Who, who is the, best, the, the greatest example of the fruits of the Spirit? Jesus. We need to come after Christ. We need to follow him. Second is this. I got seven points, so, and each point is actually two points, so there's 14 points, and Amanda just shuddered. I'm just kidding. Point two is this. Matthew chapter 16, go back to verse 21. It says, From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem, and suffer many things of the elders and, and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and be raised again the third day. If, if you don't mind, I'm also going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34. It says this. That's chapter 16. I wrote down the wrong verse, but I can tell you what it is. Oh, 3 and 4, not 34. Sorry about that. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Salvation is about the cross of Christ. Salvation is about the cross of Christ. Uh, the, the, the cross of Christ is, was the place where, where, where he died. The Bible says, uh, uh, "By his wounds, uh, or by uh, his, he was wounded for our transgressions. Or for our transgressions, uh, by his stripes we are healed." Uh, uh, we 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 uh, we uh, we look at the cross uh, as as the place where his blood was spilled, and and we we know that it was on that cross that he cried, "It is finished." If he hadn't died, our sins would not be atoned. Now we also know that the resurrection is important. To by the way, I'm throwing that out there. If he hadn't risen, uh, he wasn't God, and then none of it would have mattered anyways. So, so praise the Lord for his resurrection. Uh, but but, we, we, but the, the preaching of the cross, uh, to them that are lost, is foolishness. But to us, to us that are saved, uh, man, it is everything. Because it is through the cross of Christ uh, that, 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 that that sacrifice was made once and for all for us. I mean, I thank God for the cross of Christ, and I thank God for what he did for, for us there. Uh, we had nothing to do with it. I, I, I didn't have to do anything. I didn't suffer a lick. I didn't, I didn't, I, I, there was no, I didn't take a stripe. 
Nobody spat in my face. Nobody ripped out my beard. This, it'd, be, it'd be terrible if you ripped out my beard. Nobody did that to me. Uh, nobody blindfolded me and slapped me. They didn't mock me. They didn't scourge me. Uh, they, they didn't play the, a crown of thorns upon my head. Uh, uh, none of those things happened to me. It was all about what Jesus did for me. That's salvation. It's about what Christ did for us, what, not what he did for the whole world. Because he didn't just die for us. He died for the sins of the whole world. And, and so, so I'm thankful that I can be saved, not because of what I do, but because of what Christ has done for me. Now, uh, compare that to, to the discipleship. What is discipleship? It's following after Christ. What did Jesus say? Well, in, in Mark chapter uh, 8, 34, he said that I need to pick up my cross and follow him. We talked about this morning that, that as disciples of Christ, uh, as followers of God, we all have our own path to take, right? Uh, uh, my life may not be the same as yours. Just like when, when uh, just like this morning, when uh, I mentioned when, when Peter uh, responded to Christ, when Jesus said, uh, "Love us, thou me," and he mentioned how he was going to die, and he says, well, "What about this guy over here?" Pointing to John, and Jesus, Jesus said, "Does it matter? Follow me." See, it's not, it's not whether, it's, it has nothing to do with you or you or you. My cross is my cross, and I need to pick it up. I and mean, it'll be different than yours. But that doesn't matter. I need to bear my cross. And listen, the Bible promises that there'll be persecution for us. I'll be honest, we haven't had a whole lot of persecution. We have had the very slightest of persecutions. You may get somebody who makes fun of you. You might have somebody, if you knock on the door, they might tell you to go away or slam the door. Or I once had somebody yell at me, get off the porch without even opening the door. Uh, that, those things might happen to you. Not that big of a deal. You know what the Bible says to do with things like that? Kick the dust off your feet and go on and tell the next person. So it's not your job to convince them or to convict their heart. It's just your job to tell them. But guess what? That's your cross. Now, that's a cross. There are those who have died for, the, for their faith. That's a much heavier cross to bear. Man, those that have been persecuted and tortured. Uh, uh, if you ever uh, read uh, the worm brands, uh, Tortured for Christ, man went through some terrible things. Why? All to preach the cross of Christ. He had a cross to bear. But if we don't pick up a cross, that's not discipleship. There are a lot of, there are a lot of Christians that, 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 that or people that sit, they get saved. That, and listen, you can get saved and have faith in Christ and never grow as a Christian. Remember, it talks about that maturity level. We need to, to, to desire the sincere milk of the word so that we can grow thereby. God's not going to give heavy burdens or heavy temptations or heavy trials to a baby. I wouldn't, ask, I wouldn't ask Zeke to go out and mow my lawn. But I'll ask Elijah because he's bigger, more, more mature. God wouldn't, doesn't tempt or try young baby Christians. But as they mature... Trials may grow. And sometimes, they just don't feed themselves. I lost seven pounds this week. Whew. I am healthier for it. I did not starve myself. Do you know what I did? I, well, I exercised. Um, uh, no, not really. Yes, no. Uh, now, don't judge me. I ate a plant-based diet this week. Now, there's nothing wrong with meat. I'm not saying it's sinful or anything, but it's healthy to eat this way. What did God tell, tell now this isn't the message, but I'm, I'm trying to get a point across. So what did God tell, tell Adam and Eve was meat for them in the garden? Plants. So I went back to that, and guess what? My blood sugar's under control. Within four days, it was down to 103, uh, I, I, which was on uh, for fasting. I, I lost seven pounds. I'm feeling better than I ever have just because just I'm eating better and healthy. Well, if I don't feed myself, guess what? Or if I feed myself all the bad things, I don't feel very good. If I don't feed myself at all, I, well, if I don't fe feed my children, guess what? They don't grow. We need sustenance. 
Listen, I don't care if you eat vegan, but I do care if you read the word. This is, this is the, the, real, <clears throat> the real nutrients that we need. This is what will feed us. This is what will, will strengthen us. This is what will help us to grow, to mature, so that we can then pick up our cross and follow after him. So many, so many people that claim the name of Christ will second-guess themselves or would rather just let the cross lay there. But there's that difference. You can be saved knowing that because it's about the cross of Christ, but still not be a disciple. And, and can I, let, me, let me say this. Uh, we need to pick up our crosses. God's called us to it. God has called us to it. He's overcoming fears. means overcoming excuses and being obedient to the word of God in our service unto him. Listen, God hasn't, our service may look different. Everybody serves God, uh, God calls us all differently. But there's some things God calls us to do. And and I I feel like I I don't want to, it's not a dead horse. I feel, but preaching the word and being uh, being a, a, a witness and a testimony is absolutely what God would have us to do. And if we're not doing it, we're not picking up our cross. God wants us to pick up the cross. Number three. John, or Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9. We all know it. For by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the, what's the word? Gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Salvation is about a free gift. It does not cost us one bit. There is, again, there's no work that needs to be done. It, it, it has nothing to do with us. It is free from God. He doesn't withhold it. Uh, he, doesn't, uh, he doesn't put strings upon it. Uh, uh, the, only, the only thing that is required is this, faith in Jesus Christ. If you believe in him, if you believe in the Son, you have life and life eternal. Man, what a blessing. What a blessing. We were dead in our trespasses and sins, and we trusted in Christ. And listen, the, the Spirit drew us. Uh, we, we didn't seek Him. He draws us. Listen, He draw, He would draw everyone. Remember, it's His foreknowledge uh, that, that causes Him to draw those. He knows who will say yes. So, so He knew that George was going to get saved, what, four years ago? He, he, he knew that he would accept Christ and the Spirit of God convicted his heart and, and he got saved four years ago. Uh, how, how long, you're old, how long ago was that? 46, before I was even born, God spoke to Earl's heart and drew him. And guess what? He got saved. It had nothing to do with him. It was a free gift that was offered unto him. It was laid out on a silver platter. Hey, here you go. And he said, thank you. And the truth of the matter is, that free gift is available for anybody that wants it. Anybody. Red, yellow, black, or white, they are precious in his sight. doesn't matter whether they're the Democrat or Republican or where they're from, uh, which side of the tracks they live on. Christ died for them too. It's a free gift. But discipleship, on the other hand, it isn't what God gives to us. Discipleship is about us giving back to God. Romans chapter 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Reasonable service. Not above and beyond. It's not an overpayment. It's not excessive. It's reasonable. It's what should be expected because of what Christ did for you. The Bible says, also says this, that the love of Christ constraineth me, draws me, because uh, for if Christ died for my sins, then everything should be his. I, I'm paraphrasing, but everything that I have, everything that I am is his. We are a purchased possession. We're to give our lives unto Christ. That verse from Romans chapter 12 uh, says that it's a, it's a living sacrifice. I've, I've heard this phrase, it's easier to die for Christ than it is to live for Christ. Now, I don't know that that's true. I've never had to make that choice. But I will say this, it's a one, to die for Christ is a decision that takes one, it's one time, right? 
you, you, uh, the, the Columbine shooting, if you remember what happened, uh, the shooter came into the school before he actually went into the school. There was a young girl that was sitting outside talking to a friend, and he walked up to her, knowing that she was a Christian, and he said, do you love Jesus? And she said she had a choice to make, yes or no. And she said, yes. And he said, he said then, then, uh, then, then you're going to go meet him. And he pulled the trigger and shot, shot her either in the face or the chest and killed her instantly. Terrible, terrible tragedy. Never, never should have happened. But she made a choice. One time, praise God that, 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 she, that she made that choice. But sacrificing her life for Christ is an everyday choice. Every morning I get up, every time I'm given a choice, I have to choose uh, uh, whether, whether I want to serve myself or serve God. Uh, uh, man, it'd be easy to just serve myself all the time. It'd be much more pleasant. It wouldn't be nearly as productive. It wouldn't be nearly as, 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 as good. I would be miserable, to be honest with you. I've done that before. I've been there. You know what? I decided I didn't like it very much. I, I, I decided I'd rather follow God and allow God, because real joy and real happiness is in my relationship with God, not in what this world has to offer. So, yeah, to be honest, sacrificing myself and sacrificing my life to serve God, it, it, not even, there's, no, there's not even a second thought. Because I've, I've got to the other side, and I've seen the benefits of serving God. Uh, and I've seen the, 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 the costs of not. Man, uh, was it uh, back in 2007, 2008, we just started coming back to church. I, I was away from God for a couple of years. And man, I, 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 being around all you Christian people uh, uh, that were here, uh, be, uh, as Pastor Williams was preaching, and, and man, the Spirit of God began to stir in me and says, Drew, you remember this, don't you? Man, I began to have a desire in my heart to, to serve God and to do what was right because, because of the influence of the Spirit of God in my heart because of people here. Praise God for that. Thank you, Lord. But what did that do? I, I got a taste again of what I'd forgotten. And that, have you ever had something? Have you ever had, have you ever drank coffee and then had something really sweet and then tried to drink your coffee? Now, some people just drink their coffee black. Brother Troy probably does that, I'm assuming. Uh, and, and for the most part, I do too anymore. But if, you have, if you're drinking coffee, and then you eat something sweet, and then you try to drink your coffee, all whatever sweetness, whatever sugar, whatever you put in there is gone, and it suddenly tastes like black coffee. And I like that now. However, there was a time when I didn't. Man, I, I, I had the sweet life. I had everything that I wanted. I had a job. I had a house that I, that I purchased. Uh, I was making double payments in the house because I was making hand over fist, working, working double shifts. I, I, I'd met the most beautiful woman in the world. I couldn't imagine that she wanted anything to do with me, and she married me. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. But it blew my mind. I can remember seeing her get out of the car and thinking, well, this is over. <laughs> the first time, the first day. I figured she'd walk up and, and see me and be like, yeah, yeah. We'll see you later. But no, it didn't happen. I mean, I had everything. That, well, I thought I had everything. I had everything that the world thought was right. I had a new car, and of course it was a Toyota Yaris, don't judge me. Uh, it was good on gas. Uh, I, I, I had all kinds of things, but what I didn't have was a relationship with God. And when I got a taste of that, man, I, it made the life that I had so distasteful. And I am so thankful for that. So, no, I don't look back and say, man, I lost anything. I, I look back and think and realize, uh, and the truth is, I didn't really lose anything other than the, 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 the old life that I still have my wife. And praise God, she's saved, and she's, she, she's glorifying God, and she's serving God. I, I got kids. I st God's still blessing me. I didn't have to lose it all, but I had to be willing to lose it all. I had to set those things aside and give my life to Christ. It's a living sacrifice. Salvation is a free gift from God. Discipleship is my sacrifice back to him. Number four, this, uh, John chapter 5, 24. John chapter 5, verse 24. I, I sort of touched on this for a second. Verse 24 says this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Uh, look also in chapter 6. Just 
next page. It says, verse 37, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me uh, I will in no wise cast out. For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Uh, continue on, it says, And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again for the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the, the last. I'm reading the wrong verse. No, we're not. Uh, at the last day. And then last one, this, John chapter 10. John chapter 10, 27 and 28. It says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. And my Father which gave them unto me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Salvation is a one-time event. Once. Praise God. And I know people that think you have to get saved over and over and over again. Uh, uh, they, they don't believe in eternal security. Uh, uh, they, they believe salvation is of Jesus. They believe that, you ha that, you have to, that, 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 that he saved you, but they think you have to keep you. Here's the problem. You can't. I, I love the fact that Paul said that, that the Holy Spirit is, uh, is, is our security deposit. He used a different word, but that's what he means. That he's given unto us. We are sealed until the day of redemption by the Holy Spirit. Do you have the Holy Spirit in you? If you're saved, you do. If you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, we can talk about how you get saved later. Because if you're saved, you're, God has that spirit of, of, of himself dwelling within you. You're sealed uh, uh, until that day of redemption, which means that you receive all of your inheritance. You don't have to go again. Now, there are some people that, that, uh, that, uh, that make a profession of faith. I was one of these uh, that, 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 that end up getting saved later. Uh, at five years old, I made a profession of faith. Uh, I was in church. Pastor said, if you don't, wanna, if you don't want to uh, die and go to hell, raise your hand. Uh, he, he gave a poor presentation. I'm not, I don't even know who the pastor was, so I'm not, I'm not trying to. But it was a poor presentation. I didn't understand. I just knew I didn't want to go to hell. I wanted to go to heaven. And they said, pray this prayer, and you'll go to heaven. That is not how you lead somebody to the Lord. I didn't understand what I was doing. But they, they baptized me, and I was a member of the church. When I hit 15 years old, the Holy Spirit of God said, you're not saved. I already knew it, kind of anyways. Uh, through the years, I, I, I knew it, but I was just denying it. But when I was 15, and I heard that preacher preach at the camp in wherever in Michigan, some, some summer camp. Uh, uh, the, uh, I don't even know what he was talking about, but the Spirit of God told me, you're not saved. And I realized for the first time that, the, that, that not just that Jesus died, but I needed him for my sin. And I accepted Christ. Now, there have been times since then where I may have questioned the Lord, but I've never come to the conclusion that I wasn't saved. You know why? Because while my heart may condemn me, the Bible says in 1 John, God is greater than my heart. There, there are times, and, and listen, Satan will put in thoughts of, of doubt into your mind. I've had solid Christians, man, people that I am one, I am 99.99999, because you, you can never know for sure, but 99.99999 uh, to uh, infinity, sure, that they are saved. Because I can see the fruit of God in their life. I can see the, the, the love of God, the compassion of God has worked. And, and I, 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 man, as, as much as I can know, not being able to see their heart, I know they're saved. And I've had people like that come to me and say, I, you know, I'm having doubts. And I always, you know what I do? I don't say, you're right or you're wrong. I send it to Scripture. First, first John is a wonderful uh, passage, a wonderful book uh, that will help uh, us, help us, it, it give us check. It's almost like a check check mark of uh, how God works in our lives. And if you have these things, then you, uh, if you're walking in the light uh, as He is in the light, it's, it, it helps us to understand. I said, I said, don't just read it once. Read it, pray about it, study it. Read it, pray about it, study it for a week or longer if you need to until you're sure one way or the other. And when that takes place, let me know. I've done that to four or five people. I've had, I've had one person come back, tell me several times that they were saved. 
And then on the final time, said, said, I'm not saved. I got saved this morning. Or I wasn't saved. I got saved this morning. Why? Because the Spirit of God did the work. Now, they didn't have to get saved again because we're not kept by ourselves. The Bible said, Jesus said, they're in my hand. And my Father's greater than I because I and my Father are one. And, says, and they can't pluck them out of my Father's hand. We are safe in Christ. Now, while salvation is a one-time event, we are eternally secure in salvation because God saved us and he keeps us. Discipleship is a daily choice. Luke chapter 14, 25 through 27. Sorry, wrong one. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And again, we already kind of mentioned this, so I won't spend much time here. So he said to them, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, what's the word? Daily. And come after me. It's an everyday thing. You need to continually make this choice. Uh, and continually serve him. Uh, that's the idea of a living sacrifice. That living sacrifice can crawl off the altar any time it wants. Uh, however, if we're truly sacrificed unto the Lord, it's a daily choice. Paul says, I, I, I die daily. Uh, we need to, every morning, begin our morning in that direction. Otherwise, our flesh will distract us. All right, number five. Second Timothy, or sorry, Romans chapter four, verse 16. We'll get to Second Timothy in a second. Romans chapter four, verse 16. It says, therefore, it is a faith that it, that it might be grace to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who was the father of us all. The word there is the promise might be sure. Second Timothy chapter 2.19. Verse 19 says this, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having the seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let every one that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Salvation is a sure thing. If you are saved, you're sure. Hey, what do I mean by that? It's, it's not based upon your opinion. It's not based upon your feeling. It's not based upon uh, uh, the circumstances uh, uh, or, or the circumstances in which you prayed or the circumstances that were. It's based upon the word of God. Your salvation is sure because God's word is sure. You don't need to doubt it. You don't need to question it. There aren't a million different ways. Or they, all, they want to say all roads lead to, lead to Rome, but there's only one road that leads to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ. Your salvation is a sure thing. If you have done what the Word of God has said, and the Word of God has spoken to you, you understood that you were a sinner, you asked God to save you and, and rescue you from your sins and to cleanse you from your unrighteousness, guess what? You're saved. No question about it. Well, I, I didn't get this experience okay doesn't change what God said does it but but you don't understand that I was expecting to feel this you may feel that or you may not feel that the honest truth is everybody's experience is different but salvation is the same See, I, I, I believe, uh, some, I, I recently talked to somebody, they said, I felt so free. It's because you were. Because Satan had you in bondage, and you feel that. But not everybody feels that. But the feeling, was it the facts don't care about your feelings? The fact is, the Word of God says that if by faith you trust in Jesus, you're saved. Your salvation is sure, regardless of the condemnation of your heart, regardless of whatever circumstances it had, whether your salvation was, was the, 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 the circumstances or the feelings around your salvation is different than the way somebody else got saved, doesn't matter. As long as you both got saved through Jesus Christ, through faith in him alone. That's it. Some people get saved in church. 
Praise God when that happens. I mean, it, it lifts my spirits and excites me. And, and I, mean, I, I hope it happens more and more. But guess what? The person who gets saved at church isn't any less saved than the person who gets saved, or less or more saved, than the person that gets saved at their house. If they, if they both cried out, cried out to God and called unto him for salvation, guess what? He still heard and he still answered. doesn't matter whether you get saved in some big revival meeting or whether it was, whether it was a pastor or a Sunday school teacher or you were by yourself and you, and you fell to your knees and said, God, save me. Guess what? Your salvation is a sure thing because it has nothing to do with you or your circumstances. It has everything to do with God. And that being said, our discipleship is not a sure thing. Now, your call to discipleship is. Every child of God, everyone who has called on the name of God for salvation, uh, uh, listen, God called, there's several calls to follow me through Scripture. And I, I wanted to preach a message just on, on the follow me's of Scripture because uh, he calls them to salvation. He calls them to service. Uh, uh, he calls Peter to follow him through, 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 through trials and tribulations. Uh, there are many different, uh, different things that we could have looked at. But, but, but I want you to understand, uh, while, while, while your call to service might be a little bit different, God calls you to discipleship. Doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, where you live, what, what's going on in your life, God calls you to follow after Him, to daily pick up your cross, follow Him every time, every person. Without, without fail, it's for all of us. That being said, not everybody does it. Look at Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. Verse 25, starting. It says this, And there went great multitudes with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, and hate not his father, and mother, and wife, and children, and brethren, and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross, and come after me, cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he hath sufficient to build it, or to finish it? Lest haply, after he that hath laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build, and was not able to finish. Discipleship will cost you. While salvation is free, discipleship is not. Now, it says, it says uh, hate your mother and your father and your spouse and your children. Listen, God does not want you to hate, hate anybody. Right? The Bible says, love God, and what's the second commandment? Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, you may not like your wife. Guys, be careful. You may not like your wife, but God has commanded you to love your wife. Now, you might, be, you might uh, say, well, we're not that close. That's a bad thing. Guess what? God says to love your neighbor. Well, but she's more like an enemy. Guess what? God says to love your enemy. Love your friend, love your enemy. It doesn't give you an out. It doesn't matter whether you love them or not, like them or, like or not, you're supposed to love them. The fact is that's, that goes the case for everybody. Uh, so it's not, he's not saying that you have to love your mother or hate your mother or your father, or your spouse, or your children. He's not, uh, and that's not the command here. What he's saying is, you're to love me so much more that you would always choose me over them. And say, well, that would never happen. Maybe in your life that's not happened. But in some other countries, where they're worshiping other gods, in fact, some of, our, some of our missionaries that we support gave this testimony. They, uh, the, uh, the ones from Help Ministries, they gave that exact testimony that when they got saved, when they, when they came to Christ and they told their parents, their parents said, you are dead to us. The, the, the one went to his pastor to ask him to, because in their culture, I don't remember his name, uh, uh, he went to his pastor because in their culture, uh, their parents were to set up their marriages. And and. Uh, and he wasn't married, and he wanted to get married. So since his father and his mother had, got, uh, had disowned him, he went to his pastor to set him up. Please don't come to me and ask me to set you up. <laughs> That's not our culture. 
you may not like who I set you up with. <laughs> Why? He did that because he was disowned. He, was, he had to make a choice. How, how difficult do you think that would be to make that choice between your parents or your wife or your children? Man, that'd be, that'd be hard. It will cost you to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. So if you're not willing to, to step away from them, if you're not willing to step away from your career, if you're not willing to step away from all that you have, guess what? God says, Jesus said, you're not worthy of being a disciple. You cannot be a disciple unless... Now, that doesn't mean you leave your wives or, or, or drop your children off at the, at the hospital and hope for the best. Right? We're not to do those things so that we can serve God in, in whatever way we want to. But we're to be willing to walk away if we need to. If when my kids get older, they decide, decide to walk away from the Lord. Now, I'm not saying I have to hate my children, but I love my God. I know pastors that have had to make a choice and spend hours and hours and hours on, in prayer for their kids. Brother, Brother Bell down in Sanford had two of his older children walk away from the Lord. And for, he almost left the ministry over it. Not that he was asked to, but he felt convicted of it. Spent years, spent years in prayer. The, the son, the first one to walk away, now plays the piano in the church, got saved. The, the daughter that walked away, she sings lead in their choir, and her husband got saved that she had married while she was away from the Lord. He got saved uh, like a month or two months ago in the middle of a, in, during a church service. But he had to be willing to take a stand for the truth, for what was right. And there are a lot of people that aren't willing to do that. Discipleship will cost you. Discipleship uh, is a, is a there's, that we are in danger of failing in discipleship if we're not willing to, to, to count the cost. Because listen if, it, it, listen, if we want to go build a building, this was the illustration Jesus was giving here. If we go to build a building and then realize we don't have enough money to finish building the building, guess what gets happened, or what, what happens? There's a half-finished building sitting there that never gets finished. If a, child of, if a child of God says, I want to be a disciple, and they begin to, they begin to serve God, they, begin, they, they start out, but they're not willing to give up everything, and they, they come to that point where I, this is going to cost me more than I thought, guess what's going to happen? There are going to be ministries that are unfulfilled. There's going to be, a, there's going to be service undone. Because, why? Because they walked away. Now, they don't lose their salvation because salvation is, is based upon Christ, not upon us. But they lose out, as we're going to talk about in a moment, on all the rewards that come with discipleship. There are, there, there are blessings and rewards that come by discipleship. So salvation is a sure thing. Discipleship, we are in danger of falling. Number six, salvation is by faith. We all know this, uh, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith. Through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Our salvation is through our faith in Jesus Christ. Discipleship is not. Discipleship is based upon what we do, not what we intend to do. The road, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So is the road to, to not discipleship. People intend, man, I, I want to do this for the Lord. Good. Do it. Well, you know, church is on 2.30 on Saturday, and my nap comes at 2.15, so. Man, I want to lead people to the Lord. Come out on visitation. Well, you know, I've never really been one to walk up and talk to strangers. How can you tell, lead somebody to the Lord if you don't talk to them? Man, I, 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 I want to do this. Insert excuse here. They may have the desire to do that. And I, I, I'm, not, I, I, I'm not saying there's no desire. But discipleship is not about what we want to do. It's about following after Christ and doing what he's called us to do. 
So, so while salvation is, is based by, on faith, what our discipleship and how successful we are is based upon our works. You say, well, that's, it's not about work. It's not about work. It's what God does through us. Because the truth is, you can't lead anybody to the Lord without the power of the Holy Spirit. I need to get out and tell somebody, but it's the Spirit of God that does the work. I can, uh, uh, I can play my ukulele and sing my heart out, but if the Holy Spirit isn't in it, uh, then guess what? You all listen to a horrible song and me playing a ukulele. Right? It's not about what I do. Or, oh, sorry. It's, it, it, my success is about my being obedient, but God using it. Right? Because God led me to do it. There are some people that do all kinds of things. But again, it's more about them than about God. That's not discipleship. So, uh, so salvation is by faith. Discipleship is about our works. Revelation chapter 22, verse 12, tells us that we'll be judged for our works. Lastly, number seven. Salvation results in eternal life. Man, I love it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Think about that. Everlasting life. Life that never ends. This is the hope that we have. This is what we are looking forward to. It is a portion of our inheritance that cannot be taken away. It's, it, 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 it is a significant it, 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 Think about this. The hope that we have to see Rose again is in that afterlife. And when I say afterlife, it isn't, it isn't really afterlife. It's just transitioning into the best part of our life. This life here is temporary. It's temporal. Uh, we're, 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 we're bound to this earth. We're, uh, we're, we're bound by our flesh. Uh, and I can't wait till that day and I get to heaven and I'm not, I don't have those things anymore. It's everlasting. Forever and ever and ever we will stand around the throne. We will glorify God. We will serve him in whichever way he... I, I don't... Heaven is not sitting by a lake with a fishing rod. It's not sitting on the cloud playing a harp. Uh, it, it's not uh, sitting down with your Grammy that you've missed for, missed for years and eating cookies uh, like you did when you were a kid. Right? Lots of different people have different pictures of what heaven's like. Uh, that's not it. Read the book of Revelations. Now, it doesn't tell us all about heaven, but it does tell us a little bit about heaven. And what, what I can tell you is it has more to do with God and serving and worshiping God and serving Jesus than it does to do, than about any of those other things. Now, there are probably lakes, and there are probably Grammys. In fact, if your Grammy's saved, she's there. Uh, uh, right? uh, but, but it's all about Christ. Listen, if my wife goes before I do, I can't wait. I, I'll, be, I'll be excited waiting to be able to see her. But when I get to heaven, the first person I'm, I'm going to run up to or look for is not going to be my wife. It's going to be my Savior. Yes. So I want you to understand, it, 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 eternal life is a wonderful thing, and, and, and salvation is all of that, right? It's about get, us re receiving eternal life, life that starts with that new birth. Discipleship, on the other hand, We have it whether or not. Or we have the eternal life whether or not we're, true, we're real disciples. But according to Matthew 16, 27, Matthew chapter 16, verse 27, says this, The Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. The Bible says that, the, that, that we will all be judged, that our works will be judged, uh, as in fire, right? And, uh, that those things which are wrath, wrath, uh, uh, those things that there will be things that, that are corruptible, those things that will, that will burn in that fire, like the wood, hay, uh, and stubble, and there will be things that come through the fire, the, 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 the gold, silver, precious stones. Good works are, are, are like done to the gold, silver, and precious stones. They come through the fire of, 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 that, of that judgment, and, and they'll, they'll, they'll be more pure than anything else. Because guess what? You can do good things with the wrong motivation, and while everybody else say, look at what he did. Praise God for, for that. I mean, that's just amazing. And God will, will, will great get down the motivation behind it and say, there was pride in that. That's wood or hay or stubble. And all that 
is worthless. But those, those works that are done because they want to glorify God, because you love God, it has nothing to do with you, but everything about exalting Jesus Christ. Guess what? Those things are going to go through the fire, purified, and man, those things are precious unto God. And he will reward you for those good works. The Bible talks about the crowns that we, that we can receive as children of God. Now, those things aren't for us to hoard up. Right? We're not going to have a, a little treasure chest in our, in our, in our, in our, in our mansion and say, look what I got. You know, a trophy case showing everybody that comes by, hey, Gabriel, look what I got. You know? We're not going to have that. What we're going to do is take those crowns and we're going to cast them at our Savior's feet. Because this was all about Jesus anyways. Salvation is about that eternal life. Discipleship is about the rewards that we receive. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't want to get to heaven. Has you ever been that? I, when I was a kid, I was that kid that never won an award. Man, I used to hope and dream. I can remember sitting there year after year. I had one, there was one year, I mean, I was sure I was going to get the most improved trophy for soccer. Man, I, I, I could, I, I, not only did I want it so bad, I, mean, I, I could taste it, but I, I was sure I had it because I had gotten sick that year and had still come back and played my heart out, and, and I was out for like quite a while. I, so I, I came back and played so hard that the coach even mentioned it to the team after one of the games. Uh, I was still weak from being sick, and I, I ran down and a slide tackled some kid, and, and, uh, and, and he mentioned, he, like in front of everybody, like, woo this is good. I was sure I was going to get that stupid trophy. Guess what? I didn't get it. And you know how terrible I felt when, when, they, when they handed it to somebody else? Pretty terrible. Now, that's not, I'm not saying that tro- handing out trophies to the kids that deserve it are bad. I think they deserve those trophies. In fact, it kind of saddens me when every kid gets a medal just because it showed up. Because that's not real life. And it's certainly not eternal life. Now, we, while every child, every child of God that gets saved gets eternal life, we won't all get rewards. And when I get to heaven, I don't want to be standing there watching all my works being burned in, the, in that furnace of judgment and all coming out as wood, hay, and stubble. Ash. Worthless. But man, I will be not only disappointed, I'll be embarrassed. I'll be embarrassed because what I was supposed to be doing was glorifying my Savior what I was really doing was glorifying myself. I don't want to be that one. Neither do you. So how do we, how do we, how do we, how do we uh, uh, become that disciple? It's really simple. Follow him. Read his word. Do what he says. Now, uh, I'm not saying ignore the rest of the scripture, but the words in red, man, that's, that's, there's some good stuff in there. There's some good stuff that a lot of Christians ignore. When Jesus said that we're to be known for our love for one another, that we're to follow him in the example of serving, being a servant, even as a leader. Uh, 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 there's so much there that many Christians ignore. But we can't, do any, we can't be a disciple without actually applying the doctrines that self taught. We say, well, I believe in the doctrine of sanctification good. Man, you should know that. I believe in the doctrine of soteriology, salvation. Good. That's a great one to know. Jesus taught a whole lot more than that, too. And we need to get beyond salvation. And, we, and, and to, to listen, what did Jesus tell the disciples to teach them? The things that he had taught them. He didn't say, hey, you need to go up and make up some new rules and, and dress codes and all these other things. He said, teach them what I taught you. May God help us to be obedient to what he taught the disciples. And then, as Paul told Timothy, may God help us to teach others so that they can go teach others also. Right? We're to, we're to, we're to, we are also to make disciples. Seven distinctions between salvation and discipleship. May God find us on the side of both, both saved and disciples. And if not, May God help us to become the disciples that he's called us to be. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the call of salvation. Lord, without that call of salvation, Lord, none of us, none of us would have any hope or any chance 
of, of, of coming to, 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 to heaven. But Lord, I am certainly thankful for the forgiveness that's given. Lord, and the fact that uh, that, that call is, was for every one of us. God, I thank you for the call to discipleship. Lord, help us to be obedient to that call. Help us to, to follow after you, to walk in your way. Lord, to, to, to be willing to cast everything aside. Lord, that we can tr be truly successful as, as, as disciples and uh, to follow after you. Lord, we love you. And Lord, may you be glorified and all is done. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.